Okay, good morning and good Yom Tif. Today is Monday, the 14th day of Iyar. What is the Yom Tif? It's called Pesach. Pesach Sheni, the second Pesach. As we mentioned yesterday, Pesach Sheni is a time God gives us a second chance. The Rebbe points out that there is a major lesson we learn from Pesach Sheni that it is never too late. And for more insights on Pesach Sheni, you're welcome to join us tonight for the Fabrengen in person here in the Chabad House, 1315 Avenue Y, tonight, 8.30. We're going to have my follow by the Fabrengen. And we'll talk about Pesach Sheni. The custom that we do on Pesach Sheni, when we pray, we don't say Tachnun. And there's also a custom to eat the matzah. So again, if you need the matzah, we have plenty of matzah. You can take a piece of matzah here. There's a, a custom to eat the matzah today. And today in Tanya, we begin the chapter 48. Chapter 48 continues. It takes it to the next level, the next step of what he discussed in the last two chapters. Chapter 46, he started explaining. Kamaim apanim el apanim. Like there is a reciprocation in, of love. When someone shows love, the recipient reciprocates with love. Certainly, if the person who shows the love is at a much, much greater level, like a king showing love to a very simple person, and he takes him from the dirt and lifts him up and brings him up to his most intimate personal places and he hugs them and he kisses them and so on. And we said that the same thing is what God did to us. When he took us out of Egypt and he elevated us and he lifted us and we say, Asher Kiddushanu, God sanctified us. That's what we say before every mitzvah, Asher Kiddushanu, the mitzvah Just like marriage, Areyat Mekudeshet, God marries us, we become one. And he become elevated, sanctified, which is elevated. He elevates us to the highest places. So when we think about this, and yesterday we learned, that although this is something that happened 3,333 years ago, nevertheless, this is happening every single day. Every single day, Hashem takes us out and by giving us the Torah, giving us the opportunity to connect with Him. So that, thinking about this, takes us and uh, gives us a feeling of returning love. That, that, that itself makes us love Hashem. Now in this chapter 48, al Rebbe takes the, to the next step. And that is, you know, it's easy to say, I love you, you love me, people are in love, both are in love. It's easy to get be in love and to fall in love and to stay in love if you don't have to sacrifice anything. But the moment that you need to really go out of your way to do something, then it's not so easy anymore. When you have to sacrifice something, when you go out of your way to do something for the other, that's not so easy. However, when you realize what the other person does for you, that he sacrifices for you, he puts, him away, he puts himself on the side for you. When you think about this, that makes it easier that you should also want to do the same for the other person. And the same thing, says the Alter Rebbe, is when we're talking about the relationship between God and us. That it's easy to say we love, to love Hashem, everything is nice, but when we are required to put ourselves on a side, to give up our own desires, our love for eating, our love for other things, to spend time to watch movies, whatever we want to do, whatever our desires are, we are requested to put them aside for the benefit of being and doing what Hashem wants, what God wants. This is not easy. And for that, says the Alter Rebbe, in order to get 
you should be able to want to do this, you have to think, you have to study and understand what God is going, is doing for you. What Hashem goes the extra mile, so to speak. He goes out of his way, so to speak, to be able to calm down to your level. Now, so in here is going to explain, in this chapter is going to explain a little bit deeper concepts in the Hasidus, the idea of the light of Hashem coming down to us and how it is con contracted, how many contractions Hashem has to do. And all of this is to understand <clears throat> that we should appreciate something that this is what Hashem is doing for us. And certainly we should return and also put ourselves in a side. So let's begin this journey. Chapter 48 indeed is a journey. We're gonna look inside. Says the Alter Rebbe, Hine, Kasher is boyne na maskil bigdulas ein soiv baruchu. Contemplating the greatness of the blessed ein sof. Kikishmoi keinu. What is ein sof? Ein sof means the endless, no end. Kikishmoi keinu. And the thing, the the thinking person will come to realize the realization that his name indicates so is he there is no end or limit or finitude at all to the light and vitality that diffuses that diffuse from his simple will and which is united with his essence and being in perfect unity. Now, now what, is he, what is he saying over here? We know in, when we refer to Hashem, we say the or ain't sof, the endless light of Hashem, we're not referring to God himself. We're referring to the light of Hashem, the light of God. What does it mean light? We're not talking about a physical light. So in the Hasidus, Hasidus explains that there is two ways here in this physical world. There are two methods of influence. There is what's called the or and the shefa. Or is light. And Shefa is influence. Shefa, the example of Shefa would be like a teacher teaching a student. Now there is an advantage and a disadvantage in both in either each one. Meaning the light, when you have light, uh, there is an advantage. And, and that is the light goes everywhere. You know, if you're going to sh shine the light on a beautiful portrait or a beautiful piece of jewelry or of art, the same light can shine also on a piece of dirt. There is no saying or which where the light should go. The light goes everywhere. In other words, the light is not does not have its own will to shine rather on this one or not on that one. That is the disadvantage. The advantage of the light is that the light is the same powerful light from above goes all the way down. When we're talking about the shefa, talking about teaching a student, when you teach a student, so the person, the teacher needs to reduce his logic and to bring it down to the level of that the students. Not every student can receive the same thing. And this teacher needs to give himself over. If you put, if let's say the teacher would put a, a tape recorder 
and then and then you will just listen to the class it's not going to be the same way of giving over you can say the same thing but if you give you don't do it specifically and you don't put invest in giving to that particular student he doesn't necessarily receive the same way on the on the same time so there's an advantage that this is there is doing the teacher is giving with his own will in the way that he wants and to whomever he wants to give. But there is also a disadvantage. And that is what, that what, what the students are receiving is not receiving the same powerful logic as the teacher. It's not the same thing. A child will receive something a little bit they say in the, it says Abayim Shon. After forty years, a student can reach the level of his teacher. Now we're talking about even teachers. We're not talking about teachers between people in the same level. We're talking about teachers like uh, Shloima Melech, for example, King Solomon giving uh, giving over the his wisdom to a simple person. So obviously, it's, he's not giving over everything. By light, the same light which is above goes everywhere. So this is when we're talking in our physical world. But when we're talking about God, he has the advantages, the way he has giving over the flow, the influence has the advantages of both the light and the shefa because he is not limited. And in order to give us so, so that we are able to contain this tremendous energy of Hashem, this Hashem needed to have the concentration, the tzimtzumim. So continues the Alter Rabbi. Ve'ilu ho'isa ishtal shulusa o'ilamais me'oir ein soif baruchu b'li tzimtzumim had the world descended from the light of the blessed Ein Sof without contractions, rak b'seider ha-madregois, mi madrega le madrega b'derch ila v'olum. But according to the gradual descent from great to great by the means of cause and effect, if it would not be with contractions, if it would be just cause in a way of cause and effect, this world and all it contains would not have been created in its present form in a finite and limited order. What is, what is he saying? There is ways, what's called cause and effect and there's what's called the yesh ma'ayin, something from nothing, ex nihilo. When you have a cause and effect, is like when you're talking about thoughts and speech, is a cause and effect. But in order to create a physical world, it doesn't ma matter how much chain, you have chain descent from the infinite, it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter how many levels you go down, you will never get to the point of becoming an independent physical creation. I just like to think of an example. If let's say uh, you go to school to architect, to become an architect, and you study how to build a building, and you study all the details of what you need to design and how you have to, uh, how you have to, what material you need, and so on and so forth. And you go into the very smallest details and you talk about it, and you think about it, and you dream about it, you lecture about it, you will never have a physical building with all this talking and, 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 and thinking. In order to have a physical building, he has to go to the next level. So if Hashem, if the endless light of Hashem would be endless, would be limitless, without tzimtzumi, without contraction, a physical world, a limited world, would never come to be. 
That's what he says. This world would not come to be at all. And the way it is now, in the level of a limit, in a limited, in a finite and limited order. As it says, as the Talmud says in the Chagiga, that from the earth to the firmament, there is a distance of 500 years walking. Ubein, which means it's a big distance, but it's still limited. So to similarly, the limited, there is limits between the distance between one firmament and the next. The same also to the each firmament, the the, the the thickness of each firmament is also 500 years walking. So this is when we're talking about the firmaments, the heavens, the skies. Furthermore, says the Alter Reb, even if you go to the next level, which is more of a spiritual world, the spiritual world, although it's certainly not as limited as the physical world, the physical distance, but the spiritual world also has their limitations. That's what Alter Rebbe says now. Even the world to come and the higher level of Gan Eden, which is the abode of the souls of the great Tzadikim. And indeed the souls themselves the souls themselves, they are also limited. And needless to add that the angels, because the souls are higher than the angels, an angel is not even close to the holiness of a soul. So he says the souls are limited, and certainly the angels are limited. <laughs> they are all in the realms of bounds and limitations. Why? What is their limitations? If they're not physical, what types of limitations do they have? Says the Alter Rebbe, ki yesh gvul le'asagosan ve'oyrin tsev baruchu ameir alayin ve'islapshus chokma b'nevedas because there is a limit in their apprehension of the light of the blessed ein tsev the blessed endless light of Hashem which shines upon them through being clothed in Chabad, in Chochmah bin Adas, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So therefore, there, there is a limit of how much they comprehend in the greatness of Hashem. Because what is the enjoyment of a soul? The understanding, the appreciation of the godliness. Ve'lochein, and therefore, yesh gvul osam she'neni miziv he says, therefore, there is also a limit to the enjoyment that they derive from the rays of the Shekhinah, the rays of Hashem's presence. God's dwelling gives out rays that we can appreciate. The Shem appreciates the greatness of Hashem, but it has its limits. And to the pleasure in the light of God. Because they are incapable of deriving enjoyment and delight of an infinite order without being nullified. Without being nullified out of their existence and returning to their source. Because once they receive the light the way it is, without limitations, they're not going to be existing. It's like the light of the sun within the sun itself. It doesn't have its own existence. Although the sun brings this light, but when it's in the sun itself, it, it loses its existence because of it is overwhelmed with the existence of its source. So too, the neshamas, the malachim, all of them, they're limited in their way, in their understanding, 
and the uh, appreciation of godliness, or else they will be nullified out of their existence. So this is the first step, the first part of this chapter 48, where the Alter Rebbe is going to continue to explain the greatness of the limitless light of Hashem, endless light of Hashem, and what Hashem needed to do for us to be able to enjoy the closeness and the presence of Hashem, God needed to reduce himself, to put himself aside, so to speak. We have this contraction. For whom? For us. And in return, as the Alter Rebbe goes on later to say, we should do the same. Thank you for joining today's Tanya Shir. Please make sure to subscribe, to share this, click notification, and any questions we can ask now. And have a happy Pesach Sheni, happy second Passover.